Let's look at team effectiveness. Now, figuring out how to what degree a team is effective is not easiest, so we're going to use a model called the Input Process Outcome Model of Team Effectiveness, or the IPO model. Now, when we look at individual effectiveness, it's, it's a lot simpler. We're only dealing with one person. Now, we might hire somebody because of their knowledge and skills and abilities, what they're able to do, what they've learned, what they know how to do. And then, when we put them in an organizational context, we look at what they actually do. We measure their behavior. Do they achieve their goals? Do they do what they're supposed to do? Do their thoughts and their feelings contribute to the well-being of people around them? It, it's pretty straightforward. Now, it's still very complicated to measure individual effectiveness, but, but we can do it. Now, with team effectiveness, it gets really complicated because you've got a whole bunch of individuals, not only with knowledge, skills, and abilities, creating thoughts, feelings, and behaviors, but you've got a whole lot of processes going on between them. So we tend to use what's known as this IPO model of team processes to help sort through everything that's going on. So we start with, over on the left there, the input variables. Those are the things that we start with, like the organizational context, the task characteristics, what people are supposed to be doing, and team composition, who's in the team. And then we look at, well, what, is, what do they do when they go together, when they're, when they're together? And those are the process variables. And you might get, like, norms developing in the team, rules and patterns, how they make decisions, how they communicate, how they coordinate uh, work together, how close they are, how cohesive they are. And then we can look at the output variables, the, the results of teams either functioning or not functioning, and that would include productivity or performance, what actually gets done, but also things like member satisfaction or, or innovation. And so we've got more things going on than we uh, uh, do with just a, an individual. And we'll see later that the arrows just don't go in one direction. The output variables come back and influence the other things as well. So let's start with that first box of looking at uh, the factors that uh, impact a team uh, performance or team effectiveness. You have individual level factors. You've got uh, the personality, knowledge, and skills and abilities of each of the team members. That's what they kind of bring to the group, and that's perhaps why they're selected to be in the group. And so we've got all these individual sets of, of uh, personality and uh, KSAs. In general, highly intelligent, high energy, and highly motivated individuals contribute the most to the team. They're able to do the most work, communicate the most, uh, figure out the most uh, uh, problems. So there's the individual level factors, but there's also team level factors that are part of the uh, input process. Um, there's the structure, like the leadership or the membership of the group. How are members chosen? How are decisions made? Um, there's a level of cohesiveness. How well do the people know each other? Are they committed to each other? Do they like each other? And there's a, the group size. Um, a team of two people is going to function a lot differently than a team of uh, uh, 15 people. So you've got the individuals contributing to the input. You've got the team, the way that it's, it's structured and what, how it starts off. And then you've got the uh, uh, environment environment level factors, everything that's happening outside of the team that influences how the team works, like the reward structure. is Are the teams going to get a bonus if they achieve the goal on time? That's decided usually by someone outside of the team. Uh, what kind of pressures and stress do they have from outside of the team? Do they have enough time to contribute to the team, or do they have other pressures where they can't really contribute to the team? And then the organizational culture is a big factor. What is expected of teams? Are teams supposed to basically just listen and do what the uh, leader says? Or are people expected to have a, uh, uh, contribute to uh, group problem solving? So those are some uh, uh, environmental level factors that are all inputs that uh, um, 
contribute to team performance or effectiveness in more general. Now there's also some of the process variables. That was a middle box there. And sometimes there's not a whole lot of process that happens in teams. People just go and work. Other times teams do things that affect how they uh, work. For example, mission analysis. Does the team clarify what its mission is? Do they analyze how it should be done? Or do they just kind of assume, well, we're supposed to do things the way that things have already always been done before? Goal specification. Is the team going to set up goals for each other um, to figure out at what, what they need to, to, to accomplish to accomplish the mission? Are they going to develop a strategy together? Or is, or is everybody going to just do what's right in their own eyes? Um, are they going to monitor progress towards the goals? Or are they only going to panic if they don't meet goals or things fall apart? Um, are they going to monitor the systems? Now, the systems would be everything outside of the team, the resources and the environment. Are they paying attention to and adjusting the uh, strategy based on the, uh, the re changes in the resources and environment? Um, what kind of coordination and support uh, is going on? What kind of leadership is going on within the group? What kind of support is coming from outside of the group that will affect uh, their uh, processes? And conflict management. How are they dealing with conflicts that come up? Are they just ignoring them? Does one person decide everything? Are they uh, collaborating and finding solutions that respond to everybody's interests? What are they doing for conflict uh, management? Now the third box is the output variables. And we've been talking about performance, but performance isn't everything in team effectiveness. We do have the performance outcomes. Do the teams achieve their goals, what they're supposed to? What's the quality of the work that they've done and the speed at which they've done it? But there's other uh, outcomes also that count as part of uh, team effectiveness. How satisfied are the members? Have the members had a good experience? Do they want to keep working for the organization? Or do they want to leave the organization? Member development. Have they developed new skills that will make them more effective in the future? Um, team cohesiveness. Will the team be able to, to work together at all in the future? Or will they work even more effectively because they've become closer to each other? And as a team, what have they learned about the processes? What can they do to function better, not just as individuals, but as a team for their uh, uh, next set of responsibilities? So this has been the IPO model. We've had the input variables the process variables, and the output variables. And it's important to note that this is not a linear model. It's not just the input that influences the process and the process that influences the output. It's a systems model, which means that all parts affect each other. So those output variables, what the group actually does, are going to change the input variables. They're going to change the thoughts, feelings, and behaviors of the individual team members. The individual team members might change as they see each other uh, um, doing things. They can learn new uh, knowledge, skills, and abilities. And with these new input variables, it'll change the process variables, and the output will also change the, the process. So this is a systems model in that all parts affect each other, and it's just a good way for analyzing what's happening in the, in the team. Do we have the We've got the input variables, are they going well, the process variables, and the outcome variables. And it shows how they're all related to each other so that we can make the adjustments as necessary to make the team as effective as possible.